Okay. Cell phone's up. So, today we're going to do a lot of writing, and we're going to do an activity tomorrow. So, just bear with me for now. I know it's a lot of writing, but we can get through it, I guess, we're not going to get through it quickly. Anyways, but because there's a lot of writing today, I decided you originally had homework. I got rid of the homework. You're supposed to do this. Instead, we're going to do it tomorrow with our activity. Okay, so you have one minute to finish copying this down. Okay, so our T for today is to identify, determine, and validate the converse, inverse, and contrapositive of a conditional statement and recognize the connection between the biconditional statement and the true conditional statement with a true converse. Okay, what I care about, what I want you guys to learn how to do today is I want you to be able to identify and create converse, inverse, and contrapositives of a conditional statement. So we're going to learn those two vocab three, three vocabulary words. Three vocabulary words being converse, inverse, contrapositive. All right, this is our first slide. I'm going to give you guys seven minutes to write this down. All right, so the if-then state. If-then statements. If-then statements are super simple. All an if-then statement is, here's an example of an if-then statement, is a statement with the word if and the word then in it. They typically also have a comma too. They have an if and a then. Does that make sense? Okay. A if-then statement is a special way to write a conjecture. It comprises of two parts, a hypothesis and a conclusion. I have a question. In a story, what comes first? Or in a story, what comes, what's the end of a story called? A conclusion. So where do you guys think the conclusion is going to go after? At the end. So look at this example here, right? The red part is the conclusion. So the part after the then is the conclusion. Therefore, the part after the if has to be what? The hypothesis. Is it? Oops. Can't even spell conclusion, right? All right. All right. If the animal is a dog, then the animal is brown, or then it is brown. What part of that? It, shh. Guys, I have to move you two pretty soon. So. The hypothesis is, for, the hypothesis is going to be, the animal is a dog. The conclusion is going to be, it is brown. Okay, if you can't write in different colors, I'd recommend underlining the hypothesis and double underlining the conclusion. You need to be able to separate those two. Okay. You don't actually have to write this part. You've already written this part down. You do need to write this part, and you need to write this part. Hmm? Oh, that's my joke. It all goes downhill from here, so you guys better start laughing. Uh, yeah, 
this for mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys two minutes to finish this. All right, I want you guys first to look at the converse. What is different from the converse as compared to the original statement? Yeah. It's basically flipped, right? You took the hypothesis and the conclusion and you flipped them around. So if we were going to fill in this blank here, the converse is formed by blanking the hypothesis and the conclusion. By flipping, what's another word? Exchanging would be another word. Switching, I mean, it doesn't really matter which one you use. Okay. So, everyone put your hands in the air. I'm not going to continue until every single person does this. Put your hands in the air. Everyone has to do it. Everyone has to do it. Everyone has to do it, like just like this. For fourth period did. Everyone has to do it. All right, this is your if, this is your then. So a hand gesture to help you remember converse is you do this. You flip around your if and your then. This is your converse. You look very excited to be doing this. All right. Mm hmm Or if you're actually wearing Converse's, yeah, that would work. Wear them on your test. All right. We're going to work on inverses. You should write this part down, and you should write this part down. I'm going to give you guys... All right, before we fill in these blanks, I want you to look at the difference between a, between a, the original statement and an inverse. What do you guys notice is different? There's two things different. There's two specific words, right? The two knots. A knot here, a knot here. So there's a knot in, what's this blue part called? And there's also a knot in the conclusion. So the inverse is formed by, I want to say knotting, but it's actually the correct word is negating. Negating the hypothesis and negating The conclusion. This is done by adding two what? Two knots. Sometimes you use the word no. Sometimes. Same. We're the hungry crew now. Well, I think knots, but I think you'd have to like put it like a, something like that, maybe an ES. I'm not really quite sure how you do knots, because knots isn't a really a verb. So, well, Kano is my BFF. WBFF, sorry. Work, best friend. Thank you. Despite what he says. Mm -hmm. All right. So, moving on. All right. I'm going to give you two minutes. You want to write this part down, and you want to write this part down. All right. Put your hands in the air. Put your hands in there. I'm not continuing until everyone puts your hands in there. I'm going to show you the hand signal for inverse. Put your hands in there. Okay. This was converse. Inverse, you negate it. So it's like this. Converse, sorry. Original. Con mm -hmm. Converse, sorry. Original, converse, inverse. It's the best is the best part about teaching you guys this is during the test I get to see if kids do this. Test on Thursday. Oh, test in school? When does that happen? 
I'm not quite sure it's up to death yet. Maybe it's famine. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys two minutes to write both of these down. All right. Look at this. Look about, look here. We know that a contrapositive is a combination of a blank and a blank. It's a combination of two things. Look at our contrapositive example and try to tell me what those two things have to be. It's flipped, which means that it's a converse. It's also an inverse that has two knots added to it. So it's both flipped and has two knots added to it, meaning it has both a, it had a converse done to it and an inverse. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. Oh, yeah, sometimes they have the same truth value. Sometimes they don't. <coughs> to H time. You know what the H stands for? What? You know what the H stands for in H time? Halloween. Halloween time, come on. Everyone knows that, right? 28 days. Okay, so... A contrapositive. Put your hands in the air. Last one. And you have to do it with a smile or we're not going to continue. You have to do it with a smile or I'm not continuing. Okay. So, inverse, sorry, inverse plus a converse. But let's do it the other way. I'm, I'm going to prove to you it doesn't matter which way we do it. We can start here. We can do a converse first and then an inverse, and we land in the same position, right? It doesn't matter which way you do it, you still end up there. All right. Okay. I'm going to give you guys one, two, three, four minutes. This is, we have one more slide after this. We're almost done. Four minutes to finish this slide. Or finish writing this, copy this slide. True statements are super easy. A true statement is simply, is a trait statement true or is it false? So, true statement is either true or it's false. For example, a true statement, if an animal is a dog, then it is brown. Is that true or is that false? It's definitely false. How can you prove to me it's wrong? Mm-hmm. My dog is right. And those are, those are examples of what? Is, nope. Counter examples. What, you gave me examples of cat, Mm -hmm. All right, typically you use a counterexample to prove a conjecture wrong. I know. Okay, finally, this is important. The whole reason for the lecture today. The truth value, so I'm going to put a star by it. The truth value of the original statement is, and its contrapositive will always be the same. Or will always match. Sorry, match. Will always match. So that means the truth value of the original statement is the exact same thing as the truth value of the contrapositive. So for this example up here, what's the truth value of our original statement? So this statement here, what's the truth value of this statement? We have it written in right. It's false, right? So, it's contrapositive. What does that have to be? It has to match. So what's matching false? Also false, right? And if this was true, it's contrapositive would be true. They always match. 
So on a test question, hint, hint, you're going to say it's going to be something like write a statement that has the same truth value as this. So you would write the contrapositive. All right, one more slide and we're done. All right, biconditionals. Biconditionals is a conjecture where both the original and the converse are. Does anyone actually know? The same. Good job, good guess. Let's see if you can get this next one. Biconditional typically uses the wording what? If. if. That's part of it. If and only. Nope. If and only if. If and only if. If you ever see the terminology if and only if, that, mean is, that means it is a biconditional. What does biconditional really mean? Listen to this for a second. And I know technically it's not a very good biconditional because you don't go to school on Sunday. But, but just pretend in this world you go to school on Sunday. Okay? So, yeah, Sunday is cool. The statement says, if there is no school, if there is no school, if there's no school, if and only if it is Saturday. Okay, is that true? Now, does it work the other way around? If it's Saturday, is there no school? Do you see how it works both going this direction and in this direction? Right? Do you guys see that? That's biconditional. It works both ways. Okay. All right, we are done for today.